with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse, just verse 20. I'm going to read just verse 20. Most of you know it by heart, but I, I got to read it because I'm one of those. <laughs> and it's in English, so English is not my first language. So si empiezo a hablar español, no se preocupe, vamos a seguir. <laughs> Got you all. Behold. It is interesting that he didn't say, surely, surely I said to you. Or, you know, I said, I said, I said. He just said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, this is talking about humanity, not the guys, humanity. If any man hear my voice and open the door. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What's he saying just with that phrase is look this way. I'm knocking at your door. He's telling us, you know where the door is. And you know who is at the door. Yeah. My subject from heaven to your door. From heaven to your door. Yeah, clap, 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 clap for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Before I begin, all the visitors that are here, we are more than excited that you are here with us. Hope you make this one your place of worship. A couple of years being passed from COVID. I know, we're talking about COVID again. Don't you hate that? <laughs> you know, everything goes well. Oh, you remember COVID? Man, ruining my day. But since COVID, it's like a lot of things have changed. I mean, it's, to me, it's ridiculous. But everything has been made with purpose. When God created the world and the universe and everything that exists, he spoke and he was done. He was created. Even the Bible makes this audacious claim that the God of the Bible is the God of everything. No other gods. That's the only thing God doesn't know. Other gods. Other one like him. He probably searched. Couldn't find him. But the God of the Bible. Creation and the Old Testament. Is wrapped. Himself. In the embryo. Of Mary. And a child. Was born. Behold. A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. It don't matter who you are. 
It don't matter where in society are you. If you got money, you ain't got money. You are a little lighter than others or you got a better car than others. He came at your own door, not looking for your nationality, not looking for your social status, not looking for anything that you have or you can give him. He only saw you need the need of your salvation and he just came straight from heaven, straight to your door. Aren't you glad? I mean, I know that if it was a, a, an actor or, or somebody from Hollywood knocking at your door because their car break down, you, you will tell everybody. Oh, so-and-so came at my door. They knock at my door. I didn't know who he was until, oh, you're the guy from that movie. You tell everybody. But it's Jesus. Mm. <laughs> it is so amazing to think that the God of universe, God of the universe, he wrapped himself in a body. Yeah. And he walked among men. Yeah. He sit with them. He said a few corny jokes. Who knows? I <laughs> mean... Everybody does. He ate. Said, no, I'm not hungry right now. Play soccer. So they play in that area. There's no baseball, so. But the point is, he was here. He was literally here. And he knew what we need. And he searched, and he couldn't find anybody that can do the job needed to be done. So he said, I'll do it. I'll be my own sacrifice. I'll bring salvation. I'll be with them. I will knock at their door. I will let them hear my voice. I would let them feel my press. Oh, ha. I would let them see all that I am so they can open, so they can see, so they can come, so they can be saved, so they can enjoy the Lord and the glory of the Lord. And he's been knocking since then. He's been knocking at the door. He's been knocking at the door. But he's not only knocking, he's speaking. He's lifting his voice. It's me. Open the door. Let me in. So I said again, a lot of things change in this world. Some of us change after that situation. We came more increasingly seeking God. We came praying like Nothing else. We pray more than before. We search God more than before. And we make a decision. We just stand in front of the situation. I don't know about you, but I did it. And we said, I will choose to be temple. I will choose to be faithful. I will choose to live by God. I will choose to live by the word of God. I choose, I choose, I choose, hallelujah. I choose everything that is edifying and bring glory to God. I don't care about others thinking. I don't care about the world is thinking. I don't care about what the government wants to do. I choose Jesus because he came on my door. He knocked on my door. He didn't have to. Oh, he didn't have to, but he did it anyway. He came at my door at my worst moment. I 
I should have been dead. I should have been in prison. I should have been lost. But he found me. He found me where I was. He found me where I was. Every time I tried to commit suicide. He was knocking on my door. Somebody was knocking on my door. Oh, it was not literally Jesus. But he sent that man to the door. I was not expecting anybody that day. When I made up my mind to just slash myself out of nowhere. Yo, let's go. Got scared, dropped everything on the floor and came to my senses. Coincidence? You may think whatever you want to think. But the Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'm going to be real with you. Every time I had that straight line of cocaine to go in, this is it. I'm going to overdose myself. We've been waiting for you. Come on, let's go. I'm not here by coincidence. I'm here because of him. I'm still here because of his mercies. Yeah, years before, I said, when I lost my dad on my arms, I said to him, I put my fist at heaven, and I said, I will not believe in you anymore. I hate you with all my heart. Don't even bother, look for me, because I don't want anything to do with you. And this guy started drinking and partying and witchcraft and drinking and coke and, 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 and all kind of drugs. But he was faithful every time. Every time he was faithful. I know the taste of the gun. I know the taste of a bullet on your mouth. I know the taste of the metal a gun on your mouth. Just one guy in front of you saying, I will end up your life right now. I know the feeling. I know how it is to just thinking of your mom and your brother that say they won't be, I won't be here no more. And just close the eyes and wait for the shot to open my eyes and there's nobody there. You think I'm not going to open the door? <laughs> You're mistaken. Ah. Uh -uh. As soon as he knocked that door, I didn't even ask who he was. I opened the door. And he didn't even say anything. He just came in, took me and put me at the table. And he started talking and speaking to me. And giving me food. And telling me all the stuff that, that he wants to take me from. And oh, I've just been thinking like David, what is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? What are we? What are we that the greatest of all think about ourselves? He thinks about us all the time. He got all those things to handle in heaven. He got a mighty, mighty army of angels that he can be, you know, entertained with them. But he don't pay much attention to them. He's looking at this earth. He's looking at this place. He's looking at the address. He's looking at the address. He's looking at the number on that door to go and knock. And Jesus has been knocking on somebody's door since you came from those doors. Uh, you're not here by coincidence. Uh, he's been knocking at your door and you've been listening to that knock uh, but you've been afraid to open that 
door because you don't know what's coming on and what is going on afterward. Don't worry about it. He knows everything. He knows everything that you need. So what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visit him. But thou hast made him just, just a little lower. Just a little lower than the angels. But he has given us something that he didn't give to the angels. He crowned us with his glory and his honor. The angels right now will love to have a door where Jesus will knock and call them up. They don't have it, but you and I have it. You're sitting here right now listening to this preacher. He's knocking at your door. You're looking every, what, what is that sound? What, it, it's Jesus knocking at your door. Yeah. Most of the times we act like we don't know what's going on, but we know. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Look this way. Look at this way. You know where the door is. You know who's at the door. But you are being so afraid of what will happen if you open that door. That you've been distracted. You've been confronted by your fears. And you've been stuck where you are. Just because you don't want to move from where you are to go to that door. That's the only thing that he is waiting on you. To stand, to stand from wherever you are. And just walk toward the door. He will do everything else. You don't have to change yourself. He will change you. You don't have to lift yourself. He will lift you up. You don't have to do exercise and get strength to go to Jesus. He will give you the strength. Hmm. When he says stand, he used a word that, that it means waiting in wonderful, long suffering. He stand just waiting in long suffering. He knock because this is a further manifestation of his love. Desire for humanity's salvation. He who is himself the door is first himself to knock at the door of our heart. If he did not knock first, we will never come to him. The Bible says that we. We learn, we love, we know how to love because he loved us first. He taught us what real love is. Love is not a relationship. You know what I mean. It's not jumping from here to there to see which one it is. That's not love. That's stupidity. Love is not bringing a ton of money to your family and then let them do whatever they want with them, with it. Love is nothing physical in this world. Love is from heaven to humanity. It's not an emotion. 
It's a way of living. It's something that compels us to go to him every time we need him. Yes. Even when everything goes well, we still have that urgency yes. of going to him. Yes. Because he's the fountain of that love. I've, I've, I've been thinking, Lord, if you don't bless me anymore. If you don't touch me anymore from now on, if you don't do anything for me anymore, I will still love you. Because it's been enough of what he did. Just by coming from heaven and knocking at my door, that was enough for me. Yeah, he, he, he did give his life on the cross. He saved us from our wickedness and, and our sinful nature. But just by knocking at my door, when I was feeling unworthy, when I said to him before, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to think about you. I don't want you to look for me. I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to speak with me. He just, he just thinking, oh, you, you don't mean that. It will be a day when you will come back to me. I know. I know. He said, I know the plans I have for you. I know the thoughts that I have for you. Thoughts of peace and not of bad things, not of hard things. To give us what we are searching, waiting, seeking for. What are you seeking for? Just to stay on this world and, and define your life on this world and live and live life like a foolish. And then, oh, when I die, I die. No, 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 no. It's a lie from heaven. You either going to heaven or you're going to hell. <gasps> He said a bad word. That's a word that we need to hear more Amen. in the church. Amen. Because hell is real. Yes. It is real. It's not an imagination of Steven Spielberg or somebody. It didn't come out from Star Wars. No, it's, it's, it's something real. But it was not made for you and I. It was made for the devil Amen. and his minions. Amen. But he don't want to go by himself there. He want to share. No. One thing that I learned through the years is that when you are in Jesus and you truly are in Jesus according to his word the devil can touch you I was waiting for everybody to jump up <laughs> I guess you really need to come to the altar this morning <laughs> He can touch you. If he would be able to touch you, none of us will be to be here. Brother Alicia will be preaching to the camera. Nobody will be here. Because he would eliminate us right away. Boom, boom. Wait a minute. He, God says something good for him. Let me, let me cut him. <laughs> Done. But you go through stuff. And I prefer to go through stuff with Jesus than without him. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. Oh, you're saying it because everything is good. No, everything is not good. Right now I'm tired. I'm tired of this old situation. I'm tired of this messed up in the world. I, I want everybody to be saved. But I had to be real. Nobody, not everybody's going to be saved. That's the unfortunate thing. Why? Because a lot of people still thinking that they can make it by their own. 
and he's still knocking at the door. He haven't left the door yet. He's still knocking at the door, but they prefer to ignore him and try to do it by themselves. And then when you are right deep on your mess and you come back to that door, guess what? He might be there. Or he may not be there. Ten virgins. Five and five. Five wise. Five less wise. I'm going to say it that way. But you, do you realize that all of them had the same opportunity to grab oil? They were all in the same place at the same moment, thinking about the same person. But what was the difference? In my opinion, well, I'm supposed that he's not going to leave us waiting for long. So I think I don't need that much. Because it's going to be a lot of weight going back to the place. So I want to get there. I don't want to be tired for my lover. I want to be strong. And, and I don't want to be sweaty because the perfume will be messed up. So I'm going to grab lighter. Wait. While the others were just thinking, I have to make sure that I'm going to make it. Amen. And what happened? Uh, we need more oil, girlfriends. But they say, uh, we cannot give you our oil. I mean, if we give you some of our oil, literally they were saying, we all going to mess up. We all going to be messed up. So you had, you had to go back again. You should have done that from the beginning. But when they made the decision to go back, we all know what happened. The door was closed. But while they were on the way, somebody knocked at the door. And whoever was in has the privilege to open that door. What I'm trying to say to you, just think about that for a moment. He came all this way for you. Forget about everybody else here. Just be selfish. Think about yourself for a minute. He came all this way just for you. He could have sent Gabriel, hey, do you do me a favor, Ron? Go knock at that door. Man, he got the angels for it. No, he did it himself. Jesus came to free those bound by sin. He came to deliver the sinful and transform, transform the wicked. Jesus did not come to give you peace while you sin. Jesus did not come to give you peace while you sin. Jesus came to give you liberty from that bondage. 
and to give you power to live above it. So repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name. No other name under heaven that we must. That we maybe will be saved. No, no, no. We will be saved. Stand with me. Musicians may come. This is what I was show to explain to you. Forget that you are sitting in this sanctuary right now. Or actually, you're standing in this sanctuary right now. Sorry. You are in your place right now. You are in your place. He's not coming knocking at your door just to give you salvation. Some of you need answers. Some of you need a touch. Some of you need revelation. He's not knocking at your door all the time because you are lost. No, no. He, he, he knocks at your door because he wants to give you something that you need. So you are on your place right now. He knocks at your door. He's insisting because he knows you are on the inside. But he's not going to break the door. He's just, he's just going to knock. I mean, you can turn the volume of your TV up, all the way up. You can turn your radio all the way up. Start jamming in there. All you're telling him is, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. You're not saying I'm not at home. You're telling him. I'm here, so keep knocking. It's decision time. You want your answer? You have to open the door. But Brother John, my arm cannot stretch all the way you are. I had to walk. Get off of my comfort zone. My comfy place. My lazy boy recliner. And walk. And guess what? I have to touch that now. Somebody else is touching it on the other side. What is going to happen by that touch? Something is going to pass to you. 
But you had to move. He did, he did what we needed to do. Be done. He did it already. He's just waiting on you. 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 You, the one that are here right now. You. I'm talking to you. He's waiting on you. You've been asking God, where are you? Where? He's been in the same place. But you're not moving toward him. This is the day that the Lord has made. Scripture says, I will rejoice. But why don't you say, I will open the door. Here's, here's your door. Whoever wants to open, you're invited to this place. Like I said, it's, it's, it's decision time. You need that answer, come and get it. He's knocking at your door. It's not a desperate knock. It's a knock of love. Love is calling at your door. Love is calling at your door. Will you answer? Will you answer him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands, lift your heart, lift your praise to him. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. That's why he's been knocking. That's why he's been knocking, because he knows what you need. He knows what you need. The answer is right in front of you. Open the door. 